Let's say you were given the task of writing a method to calculate the midpoint between two points. Here's a first attempt in Java. We've created this static method called midpoint, and we've passed the coordinates of the first point in x1 and y1, and also the coordinates of the second point in x2 and y2. Over here, we're calculating the middle point by taking the average of the x's and the average of the y's. But we got a problem. In Java, like in most programming languages, a method can only return one thing. Here we want to return two things, namely the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. How are we going to accomplish this? One way we can solve this problem is by creating a class to hold both the x and the y-coordinate. That way we can return a coordinate from our method and inside that coordinate we can contain both the x and the y information. This is the class that we put together for this purpose. Notice that we have some simple getters a constructor and a toString. Now let's re-examine the midpoint method that we were trying to write earlier. Once again we've calculated the midpoint x and the midpoint y by taking the averages, but this time instead of having a problem returning two things, we can simply take the information and put it into a new object and then just return the object. Let's see what that does to our main method. For example right here we're creating two points, 0, 0 and 2, 10 and then we're asking the midpoint to find the midpoint. Let's run this and see what happens. Here you can see that it's correctly found the midpoint to be 1, 5. But did we really need to create all this code or is there a faster way? In Java, whenever we need to have two things inside of an object, we might want to consider using Java's standard pair class. Here is the Oracle documentation, the Java docs on the pair class. Three things we want to mention. First, the standard pair class is relatively new, being introduced in Java version 8. Second, the class is located in the library JavaFX util instead of the standard Java util. And third, the class is fairly spartan. Check out how few methods there are. Inside the pair class, there are two objects that are contained inside. One is known as the k or the key, and the other is referred to as the v or the value. Notice that the pair class cannot store primitives. Here are the methods available for the pair class. The equals method only returns true if the k and the v values match for two objects. In other words, the k for the first object has to be equal to the k for the second object, and the v has to be equal as well for the two objects. Notice that the k is referred to as the key and the v is the value, and then there's also a hash code function. There's also a simple toString which has some issues which we'll get to in a minute. But first of all, using the terms key and value and having this hash code function leads to a significant misunderstanding for most novice programmers dealing with the pair class. This pair class has nothing to do with hashing. In fact, there is no relationship between the key and its value. We'll show that in an example in a minute. The hash code is available in case you want to take these pair objects and either store them in a hash table or perhaps in your program you only want to store the hash codes for security reasons. The pair class inherits from object as do all classes in Java and so some additional methods are inherited from the object class. Now let's have a look at another implementation of our midpoint method, this time using the pair class. Notice that we haven't had to write any additional code to create a brand new class or object. Here by using the existing Java library pair class, we're able to create pairs to represent our coordinates. In the main method, we're creating two points here, 2, 0, and 2, 20, and then we're calling the midpoint formula, which conveniently returns a pair object with the answer. Let's run this method now and see what happens. Notice we've gotten the answer we were expecting, 2, 10, but there's this awkward equal sign in between. The reason for that is that the equal sign is the default delimiter for the toString on the pair class. Let's have a look at that for a second. Referring once again to the Java docs on the pair class, we see that the toString function for pair uses equals as a delimiter. But we can get around this issue and provide our more familiar parentheses notation for coordinates by implementing our own print function. Let's run this again and see what happens. 
Here we get our 210 in more familiar notation. The last thing we want to leave with is the pair equals function. Notice we've in this project created three separate pair objects. Here we have one that associates apple, the string, with a number, banana with another number, and banana with a third number. Notice that the last two pair objects are going to be identical for both the k and the v. If we run this, we can see that the first two are known to be different, so they return false. But the next, the, but the last two, because both the k and the v values match, returns a value of true. In addition, if we print out the hash codes for each of these three pair objects, we can see that two pair objects that have the identical k and v values will always result in identical hash code.